Hello everyone and welcome to a brand new vlog. I think the last time I saw you now was about four weeks ago and I feel like so much has happened. I've got so much to share with you and so much to show you. Um, so yeah, be prepared for a little bit of rambling <laughs> this time around um, but I will try to keep it uh, short and sweet. Um, so I've come up the allotment quite early again. I love early mornings up here. It's my absolute favourite time. Um, but it is quite busy today. It's a Saturday um, and it's quite busy. People have got their tillers and their rotovators out. Um, so yeah, I don't know if you can pick up the sound on here. But anyway, I'm so happy with how the allotment is looking right now. And I don't mean to blow my own trumpet, but I'm just so pleased with how it's looking. There's still work to do and there's still areas to tidy like the one um, to the side of the shed and I desperately need to tidy the fruit cage but it's officially the start of spring. The daffodils are blooming, there's tulips popping up, um, it just looks so green and lush and this past week we've been having the most glorious weather. It's been pure sunshine, it's been really hot, I mean t-shirt weather. Um, and remember we are at the very end of March here, it's the 30th of March today. Um, so yeah, it's been really nice. Um, and I love coming up the allotment now, seeing my daffodils in bloom by the entrance um, and seeing them in the container, it just makes you happy. It makes you so, so happy and I'm so excited for the year ahead. But I am reining in my temptation because even though the weather's been really nice this week, we are due a dip in the temperature next week so um i won't be planting out my sweet peas yet what i do want to do today is obviously tidy the fruit cage i was going to plant my potatoes out but there's still purple sprouting broccoli in that bed so i'm going to give that a week then dig it up and put my potatoes in i was also going to sow my carrots but they're swiss chard there <laughs> so the swiss chard is going to have to be dug up today um, for my carrots to be sown. I'm also going to sow some radish in the radish tank, plant out some cornflowers and some hollyhocks because I sowed them last November and they are quite hardy so I'm going to pop them out um, and yeah just um, just enjoy the day because I've got all day up here which is quite nice. Um, it's Mother's Day tomorrow so I am taking my mum out for the day um, not up the allotment. <laughs> she doesn't like gardening, so um, we won't be doing anything garden related. Um, but yeah, just so happy with how the allotment is looking. So, so happy. Um, but anyway, what I am desperate to talk about is the farm. So I went to Wales four weeks ago now. Was it four weeks ago? Yeah, about four weeks ago now. Um, and I was there for three whole weeks. Um, and I feel really grateful um, to be able to spend three weeks there. Um, obviously my dad was um, in charge of the business then and it was all on his shoulders so I do feel really lucky that you know I had the opportunity to go to Wales um, for a few weeks at a time. Um, but yeah I was there for three weeks but I had to come home then because of work because we're getting ready for the garden shows um, there was so much to do um, and I went to Wales because it was lambing and as most of you know I've got my own Herdwick flock and I've got 12 ewes and one ram called Idwell and Charles has his flock of hardy speckled face and Texel cross sheep and I think he's got about 60 to 70 of those sheep and they've been lambing for quite a while now my Herdwicks were due to lamb from the 23rd of February and I thought I was gonna miss it um, and I, I sort of kind of did <laughs> because whilst I was there only two of my Herdwicks lambed um, and I'm actually really pleased to say that those two Herdwicks were my two originals um, so Charles brought me those two Herdwicks for my birthday last April um, and I called them Blodin and Beatrix because they are they're rather special to me so they get special names <laughs> Um, yeah, Blodin means flower in Welsh and obviously Beatrix is named after Beatrix Potter. So they were the first two to lamb and Blodin was the first one. I didn't even think she was pregnant. She didn't look very big at all. She did it all by herself. 
I woke up that morning, we went out to feed the sheep and there was this little black lamb in the field. So she had a pure Herdwick lamb, which, oh my gosh, I was so excited, I could cry. Um, and what's even better is that lamb is a ewe lamb, so it's a little girl. Um, and I decided to call her Gwenny, which is the Welsh for smiley. And I thought it was quite apt because Herdwicks always look like they're smiling. Um, and I also wanted it to link to her mum because obviously her mama has a Welsh name as well. But she was just so lovely and oh, just so, so lovely. Um, I was just so pleased that it was a pure Herdwick and a ewe lamb. And she was one um, from one of my originals. It was just beyond happy. And then um, about a week later, Beatrix gave birth to another pure Herdwick lamb and another ewe lamb. So um, both my originals had little girls and they were pure Herdwicks. And Idwell did his job. <laughs> That's what I was so worried about. I thought that Idwell wouldn't do his job and that one of Charles's rams would do it, um, which would mean that the lambs wouldn't come out pure Herdwick, but they did. Um, I was just so happy. So Beatrix's ewe lamb, I decided to call Flopsy to carry on with the Beatrix Potter theme. And also because Flopsy had these floppy ears um, and she was just so beautiful. And Beatrix is really, really trusting of me. And I have worked quite hard at building a relationship um, between me and my sheep because I want them to be able to trust me. And I've been um, trying to get them to feed um, from the bucket while I'm holding it and feed from my hand and just get used to me being around. But Beatrix is is one of the most trusting ones of my flock. And what really made my day is um, when she gave birth to Flopsy, um, she wouldn't come over to feed with the rest of the sheep. So I would save a little bit in the bottom of the bucket and go over to her and she would feed from the bucket and Flopsy would just, you know, sniff and lick my hand and it was just oh it was so so beautiful um but anyway i was there for three weeks and then i had to come home for work <laughs> and about three days after i got home another one of my herdwicks gave birth to another pure herdwick ewe lamb which was great so so good um and then a couple days later another one gave birth to another pure herdwick ewe lamb so that was four pure herd with you lambs in my flock now um, I was just so happy so sad that I couldn't be there to witness them and to watch them but I'm um, just so happy that they were healthy um, and then anyway yesterday um, Charles rang me up and he said that one of my Herdwicks had prolapsed um, which just means that she was very near to giving birth um, and she pushed and her her vagina came out basically so she so um Charles rushed her to the vet and the, the vet pushed it back in, stitched her up, um, and just said to keep a really close watch on her. Um and I was so worried, like I just wanted to be there. Um and then Charles rang me up early this morning, um, and he does a really nice thing where when a Herdwick is born he video calls me from the field so I can you know I can see it which is really nice and he sends me loads of photos as well and um, anyway he video called me this morning and I was thinking oh gosh what's happened but the you that prolapsed yesterday had given birth to a healthy set of twins um, and one is a ram and one is a you but they're both healthy and the mum's healthy um, she she didn't come back out again um, which was great um, so yeah just so happy <laughs> like a weight lifted from my shoulders because um, after a prolapse there is quite a slim chance that the lambs will be born alive so I was dreading it really um, but yeah two healthy lambs from that ewe um, and the first set of twins from my Herdricks so um, yeah really 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 happy it was a great phone call <laughs> to wake up to um, so yeah, there are six new pure Herdwicks in my flock now, and I'm just uh, beyond happy. I just really wish I could be there, but obviously I can't. Um, so it's nice that Charles can video call me and send me pictures as well. So um, I'm not missing out, but yeah, 
I'm hoping to um, visit next weekend just for two nights so I'll probably go on the Friday and come back on the Sunday um, just to, to go and see Charles and to see the lambs and um, hopefully maybe see some more being born because there is one really 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 huge herdwick there and I thought she was going to give birth when I was there but she hasn't and she is huge so she's either given birth going to give birth to twins or triplets or quads I don't know but she is pretty large <laughs> and she's biding her time so um yeah it would be nice to see what she has and um, but I'm not sure how many more are going to give birth because they are older ladies my two original they're only um they're going to be three this year but the other 10 ewes that I have are quite old so um yeah <gasps> that's the news that I wanted to tell you <laughs> anyway I know I said that I would film a farm vlog um, and I did try it's just during those three weeks we didn't really do much because we were so busy lambing um, keeping an eye on the sheep we walked around them um, three to four times a day we didn't really do much else so there wasn't much else to film but what I did do is I filmed a sort of mini vlog um, when my herdwick started to lamb so i will show you that now and obviously i will bombard you with lots of pictures of the lambs Good morning everyone, it's about 7 o'clock in the morning now, um, I'm just heading out to check around the sheep, I think that they think they're being fed now but I just wanted to check around them first um, because something pretty exciting happened yesterday, um, I wasn't here so I was away from about half past five in the morning to about seven o'clock at night so I didn't see the sheep at all yesterday. I was actually in Birmingham in the NEC centre and I was at the creative craft show so I met up with my lovely friend Helen who I met for the actual first time yesterday but she was just so lovely and we had the best time and it's a really good show so I do recommend it to to anyone that likes the craft really because there was um, stamping, scrapbooking, knitting, cross stitch and sewing, lots of fabric, just so many crafts so um, if you're into, <laughs> sorry there's a Herdwick stamping at me I think she probably thinks she's getting feed. Sorry not yet. Um, but yeah, I was away for the whole day. It took me four hours to drive there, four hours to drive back. Um, but it was so worth it. Anyway, I got home at about seven o'clock. It was just got dark. Um, and Charles told me that I had another Herdwick lamb. Um, and it was born at about four o'clock. So I was busy driving. Um, and part of me wanted to come out and see it, but it was dark and the lambs black and I didn't want to disturb them and which is why I sort of rushed out this morning and I woke up about six o'clock because I just couldn't sleep um, yeah I just couldn't sleep I was so excited um, so I'm just heading around the floor now to see if I can see it I saw blood and she's over there with her lamb so I'm just going to head in this our first peak of the second lamb. I can just about see her. And the lamb.
Good girl. They are just so cute, aren't they? Oh, I could literally sit there in the field and watch them all day long. They are just so, so lovely. Um, but anyway, I'm going to stop talking about the farm now and talk about knitting. <laughs> and as some of you know, it's a new hobby to me. I have tried to knit over the past five or six years and ne never got as far as a plain knit scarf. That was it. That's all I could do. Um, and I never pushed myself to learn any more than that. Um, but one of my New Year's resolutions was to learn to knit properly. So I've dived straight in. I've absolutely loved it. I love it. Like I cannot sit there now and not be knitting. <laughs> it just feels so odd. Um, so I have been quite busy. Um, I think in the last vlog I was um, telling you about a cardigan that I wanted to knit for my niece. And this was the one. And it's just a pattern from Hobbycraft. It's just a plain moss stitch cardigan, skill level beginner in leader of the pack yarn. Um, just a really, really simple pattern. And I did it in the age two to three. For my niece's birthday, which is 29th of April, it's the day after my birthday. And I thought I better start it now because I don't know how long it's going to take me. Anyway, I finished it. And here it is. I'm just so happy with it. So happy. It's so snuggly and moss stitch was, oh, for a harvester. No. Oh. Anyway, um, moss stitch was a little bit of a pain to knit just because you have to keep switching over the yarn um, over the needle. And at the beginning, I hated moss stitch because it was, it was taking me forever. But near the end, I really enjoyed it. And loads of people said to me, I hate moss stitch. It's, you know, so annoying. It takes double the time. But I really, really love it. And I love how it looks. So it's just a simple cardigan. It doesn't have any fastenings down the front. Um, it's just plain open. This is age two to three. I think it should fit her. Um, my nieces and nephews are quite tall because we're quite tall in our family. Um, we, are, we have tall children. Um, but I think that's gonna fit her quite nicely. And the sleeves are rolled up. So, um, but yeah, so, so chuffed with it. So happy. So, so happy. I sort of kind of want to keep it. Not that it's going to fit me, <laughs> but it's the first proper garment that I've ever knitted. Like I said, I've knitted scarves. Um, I've knitted a, scood a snood this year. I've also knitted a hat for the first time and a headband. But um, this is the first proper garment. I'm so happy. <laughs> I'm so addicted to knitting now. It's absolutely crazy. Um, it is a really simple pattern and I do recommend it for um, anyone looking for a beginner project. The only trouble I had was with the neckline on the front um, and I had to rip it back about four times, like down to here. Um, and I was so close to giving up, but I stuck to it. Um, and then once I figured out which stitch should have been on top of each other, it just, it clicked. <laughs> and all of a sudden I was away and I think I got the hang of it now. But yeah, really, really simple pattern. Um, and I do suggest it if you are just learning to knit. So that's all ready for her birthday. So it's like a whole month early, which means I can get on with another project. Now, <laughs> most of you know that I am actually knitting a jumper for myself um, and I started it around the middle of January but um, very nearly done the whole back like I've just started to uh, do the raglan sleeves which I was putting off for a bit because I was a bit nervous about um, but, but I've been doing this thing now where I see a new project or I see a new pattern I have to do it and it's so bad um, and I've got about 
three projects <laughs> lined up now. Um, but I wanted to complete that, so I made myself complete the cardigan. But my next project is a shawl. Um, and it's also for a present, and I can't say who because they might be watching this <laughs> but it's a shawl and it's by um k k Meadows natural state knits and it was from um ravelry she's on ravelry but it's just called k's tess d'urberville shawl um and it's just a plain triangle shawl um it's meant to be for begin for beginners um and you stitch it on circular needles um, and I'm really excited to try it um, and I bought this Rowan pure wool superwash worsted wool so the main color is going to be this light gray which is shade 00112 going to be light grey and then near the the edge of the tip I'm going to do a mustard stripe which is shade 00133 and then also a dark grey stripe which is shade 00111 so those three colours together um, that way I think they look really nice together and I I've got a thing with mustard but I think grey will just go with everything so um yeah excited to get that on the needles now that I finished the cardigan um I don't know what else I think that's it for the knitting yeah I think that's it for the knitting um but after the shawl I'm gonna finish my blue jumper I am going to finish it and then I've got um a kit that I ordered from Lauren Aston designs um, and even before I could knit like um, beginning of January I came across her and she does these giant knits and it's absolutely beautiful but she had this cable knit jumper which I just absolutely loved but I just thought I'm never going to be able to knit that <laughs> anyway that headband that I knitted I think I showed it to you um, it had a cable a cable um, cross in it um, which was just like one twist and it was, it was quite easy so I, I think that I'll be able to knit it I don't know if my head has just got too big um, for these projects eyes too big head too big um, anyway I think I can do it <laughs> and she had a 15% off discount code so I thought it would be silly not to treat myself and also because I was feeling a bit sad because I had to come home from Wales um, I was feeling a bit down so I thought I'm just gonna treat myself and put it in the project list because it's such a beautiful jumper um, and I can't wait to knit it but I mean I'm guessing that all knitters get like that there's just too too much temptation out there but first shawl then blue jumper then my cable knit jumper so that's it no more projects um something in my mouth right book review next and <laughs> back to gardening um so i found this book in the works and i think it was like 3.99 4.99 wasn't much at all um and it's so beautiful i know i say that about every book but like books um plants and knitting is my downfall um but the book is called herbs and it's by judith han um, and it's delicious recipes and growing tips to transform your food um and as the title suggests it's all about herbs so if you are into growing herbs or want to grow herbs or just want to know what to do with your herbs it's a really really good book and it's a pretty book which which to me it does make a huge difference if a book has got really beautiful photos i will be more likely to buy it and um, i know that sounds silly but so i'm guessing that's judith it's such a lovely picture so it's into categories like spring summer autumn all the herbs you grow in spring so there's basil history cooking growing and then recipes 
and it does that with every single herb fennel lovage mint oregano tarragon um, and then into summer oh ice cream oh my gosh what ice cream is that oh i bet it's rose is it rose ice cream come on page oh my gosh whatever it is it looks like lavender ice cream <laughs> oh my gosh um so yeah really really good book for herbs and i want to grow more herbs i'd love to grow more herbs at home and where you can just nip outside and grab your herbs oh there's a bit about salads as well at the back oh gosh it's making me hungry <laughs> um but yeah herbs by judith hahn really really beautiful book and full of knowledge all about herbs so um it's actually retail at £20. Um, but yeah, I got it from the works and I think it was about £4.99. So, so good. So, so good. Um, I'm actually growing more herbs this year. I just planted out some thyme, um, some chives. Oh, and more lavender because you can never have enough lavender. Um, I just want to show you a few things that I've been sent as well. Um, I've mentioned before that I... Um, sent some photos to the women's work catalog and they are based in America um, and they sell obviously gloves and aprons and tools um, for women um, but I was featured in their little catalog which was nice and because they sent me some gloves um, which fit really really nice and I have really long fingers but they fit perfectly um, anyway for their new design range they had these labels printed um, and they feature different different gardeners different women on their labels um, and these are the ones with me on so I'm on the little label there and there's just a bit about me on the back about lavender and leeks um, but yeah they're on these sets of gloves and like I said they are American based but I think they send out to the UK um, but they've sent me uh, quite a few <laughs> sets of these gloves so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little giveaway over on the blog uh, very very soon um, and you can win a pair of gloves and the best thing about these gloves is they are rubber on the palms so that you can pick up those weeds um, and grip those weeds really easily because one of the things that I don't like about wearing gloves is you can't grip in some of them very well um, but these ones are really really good so yeah I will do a giveaway of some of the gloves over on the blog um, and then last thing to share um, someone sent me these from Instagram um, and she got in touch and I just I loved her account and the fact that she's a small business and she had some beautiful beautiful products um, and the business is called say in silver um, and she's on Instagram if you just search for say in silver one word then she should pop up but she's also on etsy facebook um, and folksy um but anyway she makes these lovely lovely little silver gifts um and they are vintage but she um stamps custom made lettering onto them um and she made me these two spoons to have with my tea I don't know if you'll be able to see them very well. So one says lavender and leeks established 2014 and the other one says Katie's homegrown herbal tea. They are just so stunning and the herbal teaspoon has like a thistle handle. I love it so much love them so so much and i'm going to take some better pictures of them in a minute i need to make a cup of tea and a cup of coffee for my dad actually before i forget i was probably meant to make it a while ago now um but yeah i love them i love them and i want to grow more herbal tea this year so this is going to be my special herbal tea spoon um but yeah she does gifts so um they're good as wedding gifts and and big birthdays and things like that so i'm um, going to check her out lovely little small business 
right last thing i want to show you is some more house plants that i've bought um and we went to me and my mom went to a garden center last weekend and it's one of my favorite garden centers we went there to have a look around and i wanted to buy this plant which i'm just going to show you but we also had a cream tea because you can't go to a garden center and not have tea and cake after all um, but anyway i went to the garden center because i knew that they had this plant and um, i'd seen it before um, and i just wanted to treat myself because like i said i was feeling a bit down um, missing all the lambs being born um, and i've been wanting this plant for about two months now um, and it's the pink plant of dreams <coughs> oh sorry so yeah it's so pretty look how pink it is it's so so pretty yeah i saw it about two months ago now and i absolutely fell in love but i didn't buy it because i'd been to a garden center just before and bought myself a house plant in there so i thought i can't buy two um it's a calathea calanthea i don't know what its actual name is it just says calanthea so um if anybody knows what this variety is actually called um i'd be very very grateful um but it's so beautiful it's been sat by the kitchen windowsill and when the light shines through it it just looks so pink um and it's so beautiful it's so beautiful i'm gonna put it in my bedroom but i need to buy a new well a pot for it i've just been putting it in this enamel bowl for now um but the ones in the garden center they weren't very big and they weren't very pretty um and i sort of want one want one on like little legs i'm quite fussy with my plant pots um but um yeah hopefully i'll find one in one of the shops that we go to tomorrow um because i just i want a plant pot that will do this justice because look at it oh it's just so stunning i'm getting really obsessed with house plants now oh my other one's falling over um, so yeah, while I was in that garden centre, I also treated myself to another one. Oh, it's fallen over now. It looks crazy. It looks crazy. <laughs> Let me put this one down. So this is a succulent, um, but again, I've forgotten the name and I have it on a label at home. So I will try and find the label and put the name up here. Um, but it's a succulent. I love it so much um but i think the thing i love most about it is the pot <laughs> because it looks like it's hair so the pot looks like a face and it's got two eyes can you see the other eye yeah it's got two eyes a nose and a mouth um and obviously the succulent is its hair because why not um but i love it so much <laughs> Um, but yeah, I will try and find out the name for you and get it up on the screen. Um, but it's just so perfect and it's so small. So it's just ideal because I don't have a windowsill in my bedroom. Um, so they, all my houseplants are just going to sit on my desk. So I really need to stop buying houseplants now. That's it. <sighs> but yeah, I love it so, so much. So, so pretty. Um, I did actually lie when I said that, that was the last thing I was going to show you because I just remembered it's sitting right on my desk <laughs> this here now I've been wanting a shelf for my shed for ages now and um, Charles promised to make me one for one of my birthdays um, or one of my Christmases um, but he's just been so busy and I was looking around vintage shops trying to find one to fit here but because this space is so small I was struggling to find one to fit in there anyway when I was down in Wales for those three weeks Charles knocked me up this shelf and it's just perfect <laughs> um, so we went to Juicens he spent last week fortune on wood there it was quite expensive and he made me this shelf um, but I obviously painted it pink and put some wallpaper in the back but look, he even put little hearts on the ends. Oh, so romantic. Anyway, it's going to go here. I don't 
don't know if you can see oh you can just about see it's gonna go there it's gonna have little hooks on the bottom and I'm gonna hang my mugs underneath put the saucepans and pots and plates um, on the two shelves there that's gonna be my little cooking shelf oh gosh it's heavy um, so yeah it's gonna go up there be my cooking shelf above my cooker which will also free up a bit of space in the cabinet I've got loads of mugs here and there's also um, a cupboard under there full of plates and saucepans and things so they can go on here which means I can fit all the other stuff in my cabinet and um, but yeah I'm so happy with it he's so so clever so so clever um but that's about it I think today yeah that's it I've done the sheep done the knitting done the house plants done the shelf I'm going to get on with some allotment jobs now, um, it's about half past ten, my dad's probably dying for a cup of coffee, so I'm going to put the kettle on um, and get some allotment jobs done before it gets too hot, before it gets too hot hopefully. Um, but I really really hope you enjoyed that video, I hope you are all enjoying the sunshine um, and getting really excited for the growing year ahead. So I will see you all next time, thank you so much for watching.